I'm Ben. And this is Daniel. And it's time for the Bad Podcast. Cheers to that. Salud. Salud. You don't know what salud means? No. Health. Yeah. In which language, though? <laughs> All of them. <clears throat> How's your week? <laughs> this beer of the week is PBR. I've already had a few. So tonight's going to be interesting. My drink of the week and tonight's sponsor is Mountain Dew. <laughs> uh, EA Sports, it's in the game. <laughs> I'm obligated to say we are not affiliated with Mountain Dew or EA Sports. But it is in the game. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. How about that chicken we just had? Let's talk about it. Good. <laughs> Talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> you made it. You talk about it. I, I mean, yeah, I made it. I want to hear what the audience has to think. I thought it was good. Fuck uh, off. And then I thought it was excellent, bro. That's better. I had to retry it. Uh, no, no, no. When you say you had to retry it, it almost sounds well, like Well, that's not what I meant. I meant I was going to eat it again <laughs> for my second serving. Uh, and I found that it was excellent. And I, I, I complimented you. I don't know why you're making me do it on film. Because <laughs> there's something about me. I like to hear <laughs> praise. I don't know. I can tell. <clears throat> okay, well, I finished my book about the plague. Tell me about it. Dude, I was tearing it up. Like, it was brutal. Really? And I almost feel like it's worse to tear up over a book than a movie. But let me tell you something <clears> right now. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but maybe it's just because your mind imagines the worst possible thing that it mm-hmm. would be worse for you rather than watching something that was worse for somebody else, maybe. Right. So when I was imagining everything, I was like, oh, fuck. Anyways, <clears throat> I moved on to a new book called Mindset. It's by... Dr. Schweck. I don't remember her last name. What's it about? It's about the two different mindsets that she discovered in her 30 years of um, psychology. And that's what I wanted to talk about, man. Uh, do you believe that you can change your intelligence throughout your life? Yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> like increase? What do you mean? Learn things? Oh, before I forget, because I have already had a few beers. <laughs> Remind me. Oh my god. Men are more likely to be stupid than women, but also more likely to be genius. Okay. <laughs> women are just pretty much all around smart. Okay, what were you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> what? You asked me if I believed I could get smarter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you believe you can change your intelligence? I believe you can learn things. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've learned things. What is intelligence? That's then? what I'm. That's what I'm asking you. Because I mean? thought intelligence was like <clears throat> not what you knew, but how you applied it. The the sum of what you know plus how you apply it, I think, is what intelligence is. Okay. Let's get a definition on this shit. Okay, bring oh, it up. I'm bringing it, bro. My computer's almost dead. I mean, my handheld <laughs> computer. My phone. This is boomer, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. The ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. Bro, I just described that without even looking at that, bro. Damn, you must be pretty intelligent, bro. Bro, I got <laughs> my intelligence up there, bro. Yeah. The collection of information of military or political value. I don't think that really... Oh, no. I like intelligence, okay. yeah. Uh, anyways. The... I started reading it a few years ago, but I never finished it. And this this time, you know, because I'm in this thing of 
I'm going to read every single one of my books. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. This brings me up another thing. I want to talk about why people don't like to read books like that. Um. Anyways, she believes that there's a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. A fixed mindset believes you cannot change your intelligence. A growth mindset believes you can. But the book isn't really about... The book is only about that there's two mindsets, but it's more about how your belief in something completely changes your life. Whether you couldn't change your <clears throat> intelligence or not, like whether you can or not, doesn't matter. It's how you believe that you can that affects how people act in life. Let me explain myself. Okay. <laughs> A- example is she had taken students and asked them questions to determine what kind of mindset she thought they had, like little kids. And um, she asked some questions like, do you believe you can make yourself smarter or something like that? And the people who said no, she kind of grouped into the fixed mindset. And the people who said yes, she grouped into the growth mindset. Then she gave them puzzles that were pretty relatively easy. <clears throat> and they completed them. Then she gave them hard puzzles. And when they couldn't complete those, she asked them all, oh, like, would you like to take them home or do you want to try harder ones? And the like. Undeniably, every student that she ascribed to have a fixed mindset said no. And almost every growth mindset kid said yes. Mm. In the basics of the book is that people who... Oh, there's another one, real quick. Lee Iacocca, the guy, the CEO of Think Chrysler. Sure. You ever heard that name? No. Apparently he was like... Um, What's it called? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> a progeny. Oh, okay. Like he was, like it, people were looking towards him like he was doing great things, but yeah. he met his peak and was too afraid to lose his peak. So he just kept putting out the same kind of stuff, feeling a little bit of new. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was just a variation where all the other retailers and, and car manufacturers were trying to come up with new forms, and basically he blundered. People with the fixed mindset don't like a challenge because a challenge can show that they're flaw. They don't think they can ever increase their intelligence, so they constantly have to prove, I am intelligent. Mm-hmm. They don't. Their abilities can't grow. <laughs> they're... <laughs> They're already there, and they're at, they're at their peak. So it's you just how to, you access them. You have to something? prove it. Not actually how you access them. It's just people in the fixed mindset don't typically go on to achieve bigger and better things constantly. Mm-hmm. People in the growth mindset continuously try to learn from their mistakes. Like taking a really hard test. There were more kids. There, She went out from puzzles to tests. And I think they she went from kids to actual... One second. Okay. Cat break. All right. Um, this episode could be brought to you by Tic Tacs. The snack that smiles back. Is that, <laughs> that how that goes? You keep getting me. I don't. I don't know. Dude, it's goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> don't call me a boomer again. Goldfish <laughs> is the snack that smiles back. He he literally. Th- I was singing that Tic Tacs were the snack that smiles back. And he thought it was serious. <laughs> okay, so she took regular students <laughs> okay. and gave them tests. And uh, kids who she believed to have the fixed mindset were time and time again not even trying the test that was supposed to be too difficult <clears throat> for them. And the kids that she believed to have the growth mindset did try it. People with a fixed mindset are too afraid of failure because failure just shows their inadequacies that they don't think they can ever overcome. People with a growth mindset believe inadequacies can be changed, and so don't worry about them. They just continuously try to grow and improve. improve. Mm-hmm. So they're more worried about learning. I don't know. I, uh, that's, that's awesome. It is cool. I think people kind of had this feeling before, but she put those to the test. Right. Um, although I don't, I don't really care for this book because she. Uh, 
like her questions about intelligence. I feel like you can increase your knowledge. I don't necessarily believe you can just change your logic. You know okay, I mean? kind of yeah. Like it's like trying to change your personality traits. I. F- she also t- discusses: is it nature versus nurture? No, it's actually both. I believe it's. I believe you're born a certain way, and you can change it to it extent but i think you're you're basically born with a set of traits that you can't change but you can adjust them a little bit like you can't go from here to here but you can go like you know right okay. you know what i mean yeah like gray areas kind of like you can push into it but you can't go that you know to the full extent yeah and i think outside forces have to be in such a way that it changes those mm-hmm. so just trying to if you're a jealous person just trying to not be jealous doesn't mean you're going to succeed at not being jealous Mm -hmm. but i think there are things that can happen nature you have to like fix some other things i think you know what i mean i mean i guess i know what you mean (laughs) well what were you saying like i i believe it's not just okay the nature is being born a certain way and then the nurturing what would an outside factor though be because nurture is societal and being brought up or maybe it's still nature again I don't know but you're born a certain way and I believe you can work on those things but I don't think you can change your base self like if you're um, a selfish person you're greedy you can do things that are not selfish and actively act unselfishly but so I don't think, think you nature can is change still... that you're selfish like when you go to do what something about like if you experience like a like a big life event or a big traumatic event, or I something. think that can change right. your perception. I think it's like and dates. it can open up your and then you can kind of change that nature, right? Yeah, I believe I, I, it might take years, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like for me, I would say I used to be an extremely jealous person, and then <clears throat> something in my past happened, and now I feel like I'm not like that. Mm-hmm. Or you ever try to do something nice and then. I, I know this is going to sound weird. Like, I try to help out somebody, and I want to, like, bring it to their attention. Yeah, I helped you out. Not for them to go, thank you. But it was just, like, I want them to know that I did something. Yeah. But at the same time, I go, that would be a really selfish thing to do. That's kind of a <laughs> shitty thing to do. So like, I'll try to remain silent. And I, and remaining silent is the good part, but I think that I can't change that selfish part of my brain that wants recognition. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe you could, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. I, I yeah. I feel like there's a gate. And yeah. It's almost like a light switch. Like you can't just pull it down all the way, and then something else will have to happen, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, mm-hmm. it goes up and down. You know. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. It kind of, it kind of did actually. Like it, you lost me at first, but then it came back. I I think I know what you're saying. I feel yeah. like half our conversations are like that. No, but I think I got that one. You're saying like people. It's again. You're just kind of rebuilding on your earlier belief that people are born a certain way, and they're they're either good or evil or, or whatever, or evil or well, not. I believe evil. people are basically bad. Right. That's what learn it was. to be better. That's what it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. That even ties in. I think people are basically bad, but can work that's to be what I'm good. Saying. But they certain can never... things can happen in their life to make them good. Yeah, you said that the first time you explained it. That's what made me connect those two. But I, I also I disagree here. I a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> I think you can change, like, um, like things have to happen. I think that's and, what I'm talking. About. That's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, and and I think it can be almost a complete change. Like, it doesn't have to be just like a push into it. I think it could be a pretty complete reversal. I believe that as well. I'm just saying that there has to be an outside force. Yeah, an I event. Agree. I agree. But I, you just I working think. on yourself. I think you can only get to a certain point. I think you need the outside force. To show you, to well, teach working you. On, working on yourself can be like seeking out outside, like events. You know what I mean? It depends. It it's all substantial, like on what the, I guess what your, what the sub like the, <laughs> the content is. You know? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Anyways, so I was wanting to see what kind of mindset you had, and uh, which one did I have? You said you think you could change yeah. it. So that's kind of gross. But okay. uh, for me, I would say. I'm not worried about failure either. Like when I'm presented a challenge, I like challenges and I will continuously try in the face of defeat. <clears throat> but I also don't necessarily believe you can just change how smart you I are. I think you're proving uh, this this lady's book, correct. I think if you don't, 
I think you're just stuck. You're, you're stuck believing that because you're in that mindset. <laughs> I don't think that's. What that I think is. so. <laughs> no, I mean, <clears throat> I would assume I'm in more a, a majority of the growth mindset. Though I believe I do have part of the fix, but from my own experience, a person with a certain intelligence doesn't just gain wisdom and stuff like that. Like. Imagine someone who's slow. Okay. Throughout their life, they can try to be smarter, but certain parts of their brain just doesn't work the same. Now, that doesn't mean I don't believe they can't increase it. I just, they're not just going to one day be a savant. There's not going to be like a genius. So I mm. believe there's an extent. I don't know. You're losing me. I, I think, <laughs> I think, what if I countered this and said pretty much anybody who is capable can uh can do almost anything they want like if they are if they have just the will power i guess i don't believe it <laughs> like in the I, I was watching something today and the guy was discussing the geniuses that we are are known to have in the world how many billions of people are there or is it the trillions i think it's billions billions there's like seven Six, seven billion mm -hmm. but we only know of like 500 million geniuses okay of, what what is uh, a genius though? I don't. Well, I'm sure they measure on an IQ scale, which <laughs> right. But how many people here? How many people do you know in in the world who've ever gone and like uh, measured for that? That is my point. Mm -hmm. That's not something that you, you have to go out and seek. Yeah. Your own life would push you towards that. Mm -hmm. Like. It's not like a thing where your parents go, I wonder if he would score high enough. Right. Or you would go, I wonder if I could be a genius. Like, your test scores, you don't just accidentally miss out on taking those tests. You don't accidentally miss out on being recognized. It's, oh, it's like... no, no. That's not what I meant. I meant oh, like... Man. God. No. <laughs> Do we need to take a break? No. No, I meant... um. Gosh, uh, what were you saying again? Like test scores? No, that's not you, what I meant. You know, to find these, how do we? I think they could be overlooked. You're saying they couldn't be overlooked. I'm saying you, you cannot genius. overlook a genius. You can't overlook a genius. I think you can. Their ideas might be overlooked, but their their abilities, no. Oh, okay. I guess I can agree and say you you could overlook potential genius. I guess because it's a lo it's a lot of opportunity. You know? Well, I mean, I mean, it's it's like. Uh, child progenies for music. They may never go on to be some big name, but you don't miss them. When it, when the, they walk by and they play it, something, their parents don't just go, "Oh, we're not even gonna let them." You mean if they're if they're something actively happens. seeking it out, like they might not take it themselves. to go be the best in the world, but it's not also something where like they're not counted for. Yeah, I guess so. If they're like. On social media and like being documented and stuff or, or whatever. I just meant like, I think it could be overlooked. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't think true genius can be overlooked. I guess true genius would be uh, like achieved genius, meaning they have all the opportunity and all the they've achieved genius. Like they've done something that makes them genius. I mean, there there can be people with like hidden genius or whatever. You know what I mean? I don't know. That sounded like weird, but. <laughs> All I know is the IQ test was not developed to measure <clears> someone's <throat> fixed state of intelligence. The IQ test was actually designed to prove that the education system was failing students and to re-implement a new education system to increase their intelligence. I believe you can increase your knowledge, but I don't necessarily think you can increase your application for it. I don't think you can change you know what? A better thing is to say like drug addiction or any type of addiction rewires your brain. I believe you can rewire your brain and think better, but I don't think it's just as easy as, oh, I want this. No. No, no, yeah. You can't just want it. You have to like seek it out, you know? Like actively be trying, I guess. I don't think just actively trying does it either. Dude, I don't know. Anyways, my point, <laughs> my point though, is that that's the book I'm reading now. 
Damn, it sounds deep, dude. Like, too deep for me. There's a, there's a few parts that did get me going. Like, there's a part where this little kid, the the woman brings him his test scores, which is bad. And, or he wasn't trying or something. I don't, it's been a while. This is when I, the last time I read it. I didn't read it yet on mm-hmm. this version. <clears throat> Anyways, he something happened. He was feeling inadequate. And she's like, you can work on this. And he goes, you mean I don't have to be stupid anymore? And I was like, "Oh my god!" So yeah, that's what I, that's what I mean. He could get smart, but I I think you're misinterpreting having a knowledge as being smart. I don't think just because you know things makes you smart. No, I don't mean like. I mean like he can get he can. <laughs> what are you saying? I'm saying for me, math was always easy. Okay. There were some times when I had this aha moment, and I think the aha moment is what the growth mindset's about. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that people can just work hard and be as good as people who had an affinity for that stuff. I think they can make themselves better, but it's not like they can just make themselves brilliant at it. And there's some things like history or my, like my memory. I was always bad with dates. And... I can I can do mnemonic devices or any kind I of thing. I agree that uh, people are better at certain subjects, but I meant anybody can pass with this, the same or higher grade as somebody who's good at it if they just study it and then forget it. They don't have to be... I mean, you can achieve anything, like if you put your mind to it, like almost anything. You don't have to have an affinity to math to, to somehow get that grade, like without cheating, you know what I mean? Like you could... I've crammed for a lot of things, and I, I was homeschooled. I had all the time in the world, but you know what I mean? Like cramming for a test. Cramming is just for memory, though. <clears throat> That's what I mean. But they that achieved make the you same smarter. thing. He could get into Harvard where somebody else could get into Harvard, and all they did is they're naturally good at it, but someone else worked twice as hard and got in. But that that's not... I think you're focusing, focusing too much on that. You're I was just going off the analogy you were using, like I'm, subjects. Okay, like maybe I subjects. maybe I bad, made a bad one. I don't but know. You were, <laughs> you were saying like getting smarter, but I don't consider memorizing something as no. getting smarter. <clears throat> I know, you, but earlier we were talking about just achieving greatness or genius or whatever. I mean, like, what do you view a, a genius? Like a billionaire or something? No, here's what I view as a genius. When someone, when they're like 14 years old, has an idea for an electric motor, back when that stuff doesn't exist... Tesla, mm-hmm. Nikola Tesla. <laughs> okay, he he was naturally born with a set of thinking, and I don't I don't think you can just make yourself work to the point where your brain can just function like that. No, I agree. I, I'm sorry, I didn't know what you were like saying the whole this time. This whole past thirty minutes is naturally, yeah. Going naturally, there <laughs> will be people who are. I guess it just went over my head the first time, but naturally there will be people who are like. Better at things like what I meant though is look at a bill, you could they can achieve the same things, but yes, I agree that. Can I summarize? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> a per- person's born here, and I believe they can get up to here. I believe that, but if someone's born here, I don't believe the person born here can just work their self through hard work and determination. I think there's certain things that you just can't achieve. I think anything is possible. But sometimes the possibilities, it's like, a, to, yeah. to me it's a percentage. You have a certain shot at getting something. If you're not born with these set, what, certain set of circumstances, I don't think you can ever achieve a different set of circumstances. Yeah, I agree. That's There's a lot. Oh, there was something else that she talked about. What, who was the guy who played Superman? Christopher Reeves? No. Uh, Chris the new, Reeves. The new Superman? No. Oh, okay. Old, old yeah, Superman. Maybe. <laughs> Fell off a horse and broke his back. Okay. Wasn't able to walk. I think for like five years he couldn't walk. But after it happened, like the doctors told him, you'll never walk again in your life. Um, and But he was determined to, to walk again. At the end of, finally, after all of these, all of these things, five years later, he was, his nerves started to rebuild and he was, because of his exercises, he was starting to able to move stuff, you know? Okay. <clears throat> but will he ever just... No, because he broke his leg. <laughs> Yes, that's what but I'm saying. He, they like, were born with the same potential, I think, kind of. Well, I'm, I meant <laughs> Just like... Just because he broke his leg later. Determination can get you so far. 
But then there's just the yeah. hard reality that you can't I think just... you're kind of describing like privilege. Some people are born rich as shit. You know what I mean? I don't know if I am. <laughs> you kind of said that. you said you can be born here, <laughs> but, or you but, can be born but here, here I'm not talking about. I mean, there's you privileges mean intellectually? in everything. Like, yeah. Okay. Intellectually, I guess so. There's yeah. some people that will, I can never match. Are a lot smarter. I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. But again, I'm going back to <laughs> they can uh, they can achieve almost relatively the same thing if they have like the same or close. If we're talking money wise, no, I've not, already not that. I've already achieved more than Tesla. Not <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking just like circumstances and everything. Like I. But I get what you're saying. One of them will be just intellectually sharper. Yeah, that's and that's what I'm talking about. Ninety percent of people are intellectually sharper than me. Dude. <laughs> what I, but what I what I mean is, is that's the part I don't agree with her on. Is I think it's bad to make it seem as though they can achieve. You like, can you can be the next because Einstein. then they'll always be pushing for something they can't. Maybe I don't know. I haven't thought that far ahead. I just, <laughs> but one thing that stuck with me, and I. I hope that when I have kids, I'm able to do this. Is instead of praising them for taking making A's, I want to praise them for doing hard work and then congratulating them for making their A's. Hell yeah, dude, go for it. That Hell good. yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I don't want my kid to ever be afraid to bring home a B, even though he did his absolute best. Yeah. I remember this one time. I think it was fourth grade. I said I remembered, and then I said I think. Um. Everyone, I don't remember anyone in the class passing. It was I don't know what the hell happened. Honestly, in my head, I remember every like everyone failed or something like that. Yeah. But I think I even got it at the time what was considered an F. That stuck with me, and I don't even know what the hell happened. I think it was a math test. I don't know if we were answering the wrong sheet or what, dude. But I remember I was like so scared to give it to my parents. But I think the problem is, I said I don't want anyone to ever think that their grade means that they, their hard work wasn't just a, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, of course, because as long as they did the work, as long know, as you do matter. your as absolute as you best. Initiative. That's kind of what I was talking about. I don't about. ever want to shy my kids away from doing their absolute best, even if it doesn't get them. Yeah. You know what That's I mean? what I'm saying. As long as you try, I mean, yeah. I get you. That's what you're saying. We were well, not earlier, no. I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm saying right now, and I'm agreeing with you. But earlier, yeah, I'm caught up now with what you were talking about. I don't know what happened, man. Uh, we're good. Anyways, I think you had a few too many of those. Oh, I definitely did not have were, enough. I have not had enough. You confused me when you were doing this. You were doing like hand signals, and I was like, "What?" Well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, other people understand exactly what I mean. Because in my head, that makes perfect sense. But no, we're not all as intellectually sharp as you. You know what I'm See, saying? See, that's the thing. That's the thing. Several people. Because okay. it took me a little bit to get that. But so I don't. Th- I don't know. Well, dude, that, that that right there is my point. I think kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout my life, different people have called me and like, he's smart, he's smart, or whatever. Okay. And I hated it so much. I'm like, stop. Mm-hmm. I know things in a different light than you, but you know things different than me. I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say right Dude, now. Just, I, I get it. Can we what, just get off of this? this? What is this? What's a dying time plant? Damn, dude, they, that's that's what all my time is doing, too, just wilting away. <laughs> that's not wilting, that's drying. I would say it's wilting, it's very brittle. I don't know if you know what wilting is. <laughs> hey, look, we're not going to lose our friendship tonight, my friend. I was I wasn't planning this? on it. I don't. I'm, I'm... Ow, I can't even open this. <laughs> Let me show you how... <laughs> Oh, a real man is. <laughs> you want to know how a real intellectual opens his bottle? How's that? You get someone else to do it. <laughs> yeah. I think you're right. I don't know if you needed that, dude, on top of the... Jesus. I just want everyone to know, watching this, it's a Monday night. <laughs> I don't know what he's turning up for. <laughs> The sins of our fathers. <coughs> Damn, dude. The next book I plan on reading after this one, because it's not a long one, is called On the Nature of Things. Okay, who's it by? <sighs> you need to start learning these things, because I, I won't remember the... Okay, my uh, book recommendation of the week is... Um, uh, Merlin, uh, it's, it's called 
The Lost Years, Merlin, The Lost Years. It's by T.A. Barron. Uh, it's really good. It's about Merlin. Um, before he was the great wizard that we know him as. It's like as when he was like a teenager. It's like Harry Potter, but Merlin. Is it? It's written in like a poem form. It, I think it is, because it's a Penguin's classic. I think it's like an old book. Lucretius, yeah, he's an old dude. Yeah. Let me see when it was written. What if it's like copyright two thousand? <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have chugged that whiskey. Yeah, dude, that was insane. I hope you got that. I don't know why he was doing that on a Monday night. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't find when this thing was, like, originally published. Uh, but I want... I was going to go also... I, I, in college, I kept every book I bought. I didn't, like, rent books or resell them. Hell yeah. But I plan on going through and actually reading those. There's been an awakening in myself. Not right. only in this, um, I can't, I can't describe to you guys how you both have positively affected my life. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. But specifically in the reading aspect, it was from you. And that has started an avalanche of things. <laughs> so I want to go back and read all the books that I never had. And I, I'm finding something for, about myself. I like I never wanted to read anything other than sci-fi fantasy stuff, you mm-hmm. know. And I had all those other books that were like no, nah, I read John Grisham, he was a legal thriller, but I had these other books that were kinda like thrillers and I was like, Oh, I'll never like that. Dude, and let me tell you something right now. The last two books I've read were books I never would have read. Yeah, because they're stuck in a genre or whatever the But you pushed me, man. Yeah, man. And like let me tell you something. <laughs> I felt tears <laughs> Dude, I felt that's myself what I'm talking about like my, you know, when your tears are welling up, I'm like, oh yeah, my bro. God. <laughs> Things I just, anyways, uh, I also have this want to learn more, mm-hmm. and uh, I want to go through and read my my old textbooks. And if only I had had this when I was in school, and actually read my assignments, mm-hmm. dude. Let me tell you. This ain't a bragging thing. I never read a single assignment in class. Like, or throughout throughout maths. You just went to the answers? Until college, when I took calculus, I never took, I never took notes. <laughs> I never read anything. Okay. But as soon as I got into calculus, that shit got real, <laughs> real quick. I remember one day spent seven hours on an assignment because <laughs> I had not read... And I thought, I need to change my lifestyle because yeah. I'm not going to pass this class. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I remember calling into work one time because I had to read, <laughs> sit down and read a, my book and just try to work things out. But I got there. Uh, but I want to go through my, my textbooks and I want to actually read them and I want to learn about them. And I think the first Damn, book I'm going to get to. That's intellectual right there. Intellectual, man. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to read that book first. Yeah. And then I'm going to hit my astronomy book. Mm. I loved astronomy. I would be interested in hearing what you learned from that. I, I'm, I'm I learned a few astrology. things. I remember, I remember a few things. One of them, I think, was called spectrography. Spectrography? I don't, sure. I don't know how it's pronounced. <laughs> and if it's what I'm thinking it is, somebody's going to fact check. I don't know. There's only 68 people watching. <laughs> Less than. I think we have 20 We could have much more than that watching. I mean, they don't have to subscribe to watch. But if you're watching, hit subscribe. (laughs) Don't forget (laughs) the bell. hit the bell (laughs) notification Uh, when we go live. Or upload. They're able... You ever wondered how they were able to tell if a planet was like ours? I have now. (laughs) I actually hadn't, but yeah, I have now. They look at this... I'm trying to I'm trying to remember exactly how it was. I remember the day that I went into this little lab and they explained it to us in the book. But it's like lights that are given off from stars. Somehow they isolate them into this little chart and it's separated. It separates the light in 
And, and all of a sudden, it's, there's different widths of bands of darkness and bands of lightness. And those correlate to the, the same graph of what gases look like when they burn. I, I'm not explaining it exactly correct, but all I'm saying is when they look at a color, they can separate that color, put it on a graph, look at these bands of different lengths, and then go, that's hydrogen. That's helium. And that's how they can tell what far planets are made out of, or stars. Damn, dude. Damn. And I'm going to get back into that. I mean, I'm hitting this point in my life where I'm like, oh, man. And you know, I just thought about something. Mm. I'm thinking about going back and getting my bachelor's. Do it, bro. I can do it all from my computer. Hell yeah, dude. The computer I'm not going to be getting for Christmas. I'm sorry, bro. Makes me sad, bro. I should have ordered it, bro. Shit, man. Anyways. I'm going to read this book. I bought it a few years ago. I think I've always been the person that although I didn't want people to call me smart, I wanted to think that I was smart. Mm. But now I'm going to finally try to be smart. (laughs) I'm going to actually read the books that I wanted to be known for reading. Right. I think that's what happened with Paradise Lost. I wanted to go, I I read a book that no one else, you know, (laughs) no one reads, man. It was all for clout. All of it. It sound it, that's what it sounds like, but that's not what it was in my heart. You know, like I wanted, I didn't want that for people to go, oh my god, look at him. I wanted to be the guy in my heart, like with no one knowing. I was like, <laughs> I read that. No one else reads that. Mm-hmm. So secret clout, secret clout, personal clout, personal clout. It was all for the personal clout. On the eye clout. Damn, dude. <laughs> and you know what's funny? Mm. That personal clout turned out to be my most favorite and cherished book it turned out to resonate with my soul yeah so i'm gonna go back and read through these things that i also wanted for personal clout careful there yeah (laughs) and uh see if anything else gets stirred in my bones yeah dude that's awesome (laughs) i'm 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 gonna uh, reread um this series percy jackson no No, dude, it's Merlin, bro. How dare you? <laughs> Come on, dude. It's The Lost Years of Merlin um, by T.A. Barron. It's like <laughs> Harry Potter, but for Merlin. It's good. Dude, I feel that whiskey entering my soul. <sighs> Damn. Like, my head is getting light, bro. You drank, like, half the bottle. <laughs> Did I? Yes. Well, <laughs> a little less than half, but... I got a few more beers to go. Really? Hold on. There's writing on this. I know. It's like cartoons. Uh, It's always been your beer. Now make it your can. What? We can draw things? No, I think they're they're honoring artists. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are proud to present Charlie Kendall as one of the winners of the 2019 PBR Art. PB art. That is a can competition. To find out how you can become oh, next P-Bart. year's winner, go to papsblueribbon.com. Thank you so much to Paps Blue Ribbon for sponsoring <laughs> this episode. Please go to papsblueribbon.com slash bad to get free beer for a month. Obligated to say that we cannot offer that to you. <laughs> Look. Dude, it's hit me hard. Yeah, you want to wrap it up? Glass is coming off. Damn. Well, <clears throat> I'm getting serious. Damn. <laughs> There's two things that happen when I drink. One, my glasses come off. <laughs> the second one is two about Star Wars, dude. Star Wars? Which one? Uh, what do you think of uh, Rogue One? I haven't watched it. And you call yourself a Star Wars fan? This new shit is not Star Wars. Oh, so you're not a Star Wars fan. You're an elitist. Understood. <laughs> Look, when I watched, hold on, what was it called? Force Awakens? No. What was the one before? Last Jedi? When I watched The Last Jedi, all I could think was, they fucked this up. Ryan Johnson. Mm. Yeah, and I and you know what? He was making the movie Knives Out. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to watch that. He takes pride in subverting audience expectations. Hold on, let me think about that for a second. I'm not as intellectually sharp as you. 
He wants to. Okay. So, okay. Did what if? Did you like Breaking Bad? Yes. What if I told you he directed the greatest Breaking Bad episode ever? What was the greatest Breaking Bad episode ever? The one where he's like, "I am the one who knocks." That one. Ozzy Mandis or whatever. It's oh, let called. me tell you something. What's it called? Do you know how to pronounce that name that I'm trying to say? Ozzy Mandis, the king that he compares himself to. No. Uh, I know I'm butchering it, so I'm sorry for. Here, here's what I'm gonna say. Okay. <laughs> that was probably my least favorite line. I am the one who knocks. Oh, so you didn't like Breaking Bad? Sorry. No, I mean, <laughs> when I take what I love and I analyze it, you start to see flaws. The glass ceiling. Dude, I think you're psychotic, bro. Why can't you just like <laughs> it? <laughs> okay, I love Breaking Bad. I never finished You the didn't last like season. Walt's story. Oh, what? You're not a true fan, dude. No, listen, listen. When I was, when I, okay, the boomer Finish I am. It. Take pride in the boomer it, I like am. The books that you started. The boomer okay. before you. Okay. When that show was coming out, because I can say I remember when that show yeah, was coming okay. out. Do you remember the I remember show was when coming? it was not finished. Not when the first season was coming out, but in like season four, five, I remember that. I was caught up. Mm-hmm. I was working at Brick Oven, and the latest season hadn't come out yet, and I heard that it was going to be the final season. And my friend, Andy Stanley, I always love that name. Shout him out. Shout him out, Andy Stanley. He was a cool dude, man. Is he is he gone? I mean, he's not dead. He's still a cool dude. Then come on, dude. Come on. What the hell, dude? I loved working with him. Oh, Andy Stanley. You know what he taught me? What he said? Don't ever go above and beyond. Yeah, because then you'll get <laughs> expected. Exactly. And that is exactly what happened. Yeah, dude. The minute you go, oh, I'm I'm done with my stuff. I'll, you know who I'll just mop the floors. Then you every time they expect him to mop the floors. You know who taught me that? Don't tell me. Roderick from Diary of a Wimpy Kid, the movie. <laughs> I've got the I've original got the... <laughs> one. He said he tells Greg, the little the one who writes the Diary of a Wimpy Kid books, he tells him to like always keep mom and dad's expectations low. So they, like <laughs> don't ever volunteer to take out the trash. Don't you know, just make yourself barely dependable, you know? <laughs> That's a good lesson though. I mean yeah. it, I'm not but saying I, it's a good lesson to not try, but it's a good lesson that if you increase the bar Mm-hmm. Then that bar will be known to have been at a certain height, right? And so anything you do past that, it's, it's going to be measured to that yeah. bar. You're always going to be trying to live up to that bar, you know. Those expectations. I'm experiencing that right now with Christmas presents. Really? I remember when I made my parents a bench. <laughs> I remember I surprised my parents so hard. Dude. Like I remember going to bed that night and I could hear across the like the wall my my dad talking like how. He's like, can you believe my kid did that? <laughs> I am. I'm You'll like, never get that again. Dude. I will never get that again. I peaked. Yeah, you did. I peaked at like 19 yeah. years old, man. man. And I was thinking, man, that was the easiest thing you know to build was that bench. I, I find a little something, you know. I give it to her. Maybe I give her a little card. It keeps the expect. You know, she's just, <laughs> she's like, ble- she's like. No, but listen, it, it comes from the heart because it's all I can afford. No, anyway. but listen, dude. You know what I mean? I, I think gifts should be. More than like a flex, it should be a reflection of like who the individual is. Yeah, and sure. guess what? That was. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. I'm about to tell you the flex on the person who it was. <laughs> okay. I got my mom. Okay, listen to this. My mom, I'm not going to go into the personal history, but basically the home she grew up in, she doesn't get to go to. Mm-hmm. Her, her, my grandpa, he's passed away. Mm-hmm. There's a show... With a man, an old man on it, that reminds her exactly of my grandpa. And she hadn't seen this, I don't know how long. And one day I was like, what am I get that for? Her? Dude, when she opened that up, she started crying. <laughs> and I can just... Dude, I wish I could have captured that moment. Yeah. Like that moment when you... F- it wasn't like a prize thing. It was like... That was something that could she knew, yeah. That, that like, hit her in her heart, like, grasped her heartstrings and yeah, plucked it like never, a harp. You'll never get... That was your peak, dude. Yeah, and <laughs> so every other year or every year, I'll try to find a new season. And it's kind of tough. It's mm. British comedy, and I don't know. It's just hard to get, honestly. Mm. Like, there was this one thing. It was, a like, a season... <sighs> All I can say is, the seasons I was buying... Describe them in years. They don't describe them in the season. What number. show is it? 
Last of the Summer Wine. Mm-hmm. So, and it's kind of cool because they call it vintage, mm-hmm. like vintage 1982, like a, like a wine. Mm. But it's hard because you can't just look up for season three. God damn it. You, you can't just look up for a specific season. So I have to go through my my purchase history to see which ones I have bought in the past, and I don't have consecutive. It's like spread out. And then when I find one that says season 11 and 12... I click on it and it says cannot be played in US and Canada. Like it <laughs> like it's somehow it cannot be played what on the US the tape record or record. Dude, I don't know. But anyways. Interesting. But um, yeah, you, you 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 it's not like your other gifts won't matter, but they just won't hit the They same. won't hit that same spot yeah. and I'll always think, Oh my yeah. god. Unless you unless you know you find something again, like that kind of stuff just comes to you. You know what I mean? Like, unless you find something again, it's like, oh, this would be perfect. I haven't had that moment with Sable. The The closest I got with her was I I got her a, because um, she, she loves The Office, mm-hmm. and I got her uh, some Shroot Bucks. Mm. Do you remember that? Yeah, kind of. Do you remember the Shroot Bucks? <laughs> when Dwight is put in charge of The Office, he creates the <laughs> fake monetary system Yeah, called the Shroot Buck. He's like... There's five shoot bugs. <laughs> and like positive things you do gets you shoot bugs. And I gave her some shoot bugs. I printed them off. And then I bought her a Dundee. Damn. Like, you know how they had the Dundies? I yeah, you her, guys got me a Dundee. I bought her a trophy. That, and I think it said best girlfriend. Because mm-hmm. at the time we weren't married. And dude, I thought, I was like, how am I ever going to top this gift? Because it seemed like she really enjoyed it. Now, I... Dude, I can't even think of things. No, you just for keep it. chasing that peak. You haven't peaked there yet. <laughs> but the problem is, is what if I did? Ah uh, man, <laughs> then you then you gotta worry. <laughs> now, now I'm screwed. Bro. <laughs> no, I think there's. I don't know. For me, I, I'm easy to shop for. Um, I don't require soul connection. I don't require a history. I do require money mm-hmm. because the things I want require money. Mm-hmm. I want another Walther. Dude. I want a computer. A Lenovo ThinkPad. Yeah. You were just talking about that. Now you're trying to get another gun? No, no, no. I was talking about the gun before. Oh, Mm. let me tell you something else, dude. Slavery exists still. You know that, right? Yeah. It's rampant. Like, there was something I was listening to. It was talking about at least 400,000 people were enslaved in the past like five years that have been freed I think that was the the number <clears> I was listening to um, and specifically I'm talking about in Africa like Sudan now I heard that Sudan was set up as a haven for slaves that were freed mm. there's this group called CSI I don't remember what it stands for Christian something I don't know Okay. but anyways you donate them $250 they use 50 of it, and they purchase these bovine in- injections. Okay. Apparently, where are these people go to free slaves, it gets to be very dry, which makes pestilence and s- different diseases kind of prevalent. And these injections cost way too much for the people that reside there, these slave owners for their cattle they can't purchase them or either it's like illegal for them or they just don't have the money I don't remember which one it is maybe it's both and they so these the CSI gets these injections comes to the slave owners and says we'll give you this in exchange for that slave damn really they free that slave and then then with the rest of the 200 because they you, we spent 50 so 200 they purchased two years worth of a certain type of grain that can grow in these conditions so the person can actually feed themselves and mm-hmm. sustain maybe a little tiny economy. They give them a goat so that they can have food if it comes down to a meat. But mainly milk and cheese. Mm-hmm. They can have milk and cheese. And they give them, there's some other things they give them. They give them tent and tarps so they can have their own home. Because before now, they've not even owned a pencil. You know, like these people don't even have their own clothes. They again get their own name because when they become a slave... And here's a gets into the religious part, so I don't really don't want to get into it, but basically the countries that this is prevalent in are Islamic countries. Mm-hmm. Now you know me. 
I'm not against Islam. Mm -hmm. But it's a fact that Islam condones slavery. Mm -hmm. They take away the slaves' names and give them a different name. So when they are freed, they get what is described as their Christian name. <clears throat> okay. Basically, you get your family name back. Yeah. And one of the stories was that they freed the seven year old was born into slavery. At seven years old, he's taken away from his family and given to a new slave owner. And at 10 years old, he is rescued by CSI. They do this whole thing. Okay. On his first day of school, CSI is there, the guy who bargained his freedom. It's just a little school with a canopy outside against mm -hmm. a tree. And this, they're doing roll call, and this kid stands up and he says his name, and he's like, blah, blah, blah this is my name, and today I am free. Damn, dude. dude when where I did you that, learn this? I, I listen to the radio all the time. Damn. I, listen, I listen to Salem Radio. Mm hmm. <sighs> you really are a boomer, dude. Ever I can't name one person that listens to radios. Well, ever since, since I heard it, man, that's all I've been thinking about. What if it's fake, you know? But what if it's not? I don't know how it could be fake, but damn. What if you could give $250 and it actually gives somebody their freedom? Yeah, dude. There was another story. That dude, it fucking broke my heart. If it's real. And I believe it is. Mm -hmm. And it was about a girl who was on a, on a journey with her parents. Her parents were killed in front of her. She was separated from her sister. Raped continuously. The slave master, you know, is raping her. <clears throat> and, uh... Do you mind I'm telling a story? Sorry. <laughs> the slave master rapes her. Slave master's wife blames the girl for him not being faithful. So he, she treats her poorly. And this goes on for years. And she's Jeez. finally bargained for and released. And you know what she says? Mm. She's like, tell, tell, the, tell the Americans I thank them, but tell them to not stop until they're all free. Damn, dude. Dude. <laughs> It about put me in tears when I heard that. And I mean, even if it's even if it's fake, does it not matter that I believe I'm spending my money towards that, dude? I'm thinking. Yeah, dude. I'm thinking I'm just gonna go. I'm thinking about just doing it. Do it, bro. I mean, that's a. When I was, uh, when I still went to church, and when I was a teenager, my youth group, uh, we were at church camp in New Mexico, and they. Had these people come out. It might have been the same organization or a different one similar to that. Um, but there were these kids who, or some crisis, there were a bunch of these kids in Mexico uh, who needed, like, sponsors to adopt them or whatever. And my church group did that. We all only had to pay, like, two bucks a week, and it all came up together. But all right, you're talking about, dude. It's a strong, like... 250 It's not that much. Yeah. And it's nothing... And compared to what they get. Compared to... <laughs> the only thing that sets me back is, what if it's not real? Right. I but, guess that's... But if, it, if, if I knew for 100% fact yeah. it was real, I'd give them 250 Yeah, I don't know. I'd give them as much as I could afford. I would research it, maybe. Like, research... Have you Googled it at all or anything? Not yet. Yeah. I only heard about this a few days ago. Yeah. Just imagining, though, man. Just, Explain hmm. the bovine injection thing again. So, uh, apparently, these places experience drought, pretty common, but these injections apparently not only ward off disease, but give a certain, um, what's it called? When you can withstand something, what's that called? Gives a tolerance to drought. Okay. So, not that the cow, cattle, don't need water. But they don't have to have as much before they start to die. Okay. And the slave owners, preferring their cattle over their own slaves and thinking that the cattle are more... Is it by important. one injection or a couple or what? $50 for one injection and they trade that one injection for a slave. For just one cow? So it equates to one cow? I believe, um, wow. From what I understand, yes. Wow. <laughs> okay. People... Yeah. Dude, and that's what gets me about America... Yeah, it's like people don't realize. Even if the stories that I'm <clears throat> rehashing are not true, I know that similar things mm -hmm. definitely hundred percent are course, true. Yeah, 
and thinking about how lucky we are to be here. Yeah. You know what that sure. makes me think of? The past week, I was watching Steven Crowder. Mm. <laughs> he was doing Change My Mind. And it was, Thanksgiving is not racist, Change My Mind. Oh, really? You ever heard it? People think that Thanksgiving is racist. Yeah, it's got a complicated, like, past, I would say. But, I, yeah. I don't think Thanksgiving has a complicated past. I think America has a complicated past. Yeah. But Thanksgiving has a pretty <clears throat> solid foundation on what it celebrates. Mm-hmm. What do you mean by it has a complicated past? I just mean there was definitely a lot of murder of indigenous people. But not for Thanksgiving. No, no, but I mean like just in in getting this country and like getting established in it. But What if I told you I think you might be misled a little bit? (laughs) No, I don't want to debate Thanksgiving. I just mean... No, we're not going to debate Thanksgiving. I think people get it, like the idea of Thanksgiving is not... Did you know the Mohicans? What I'll say is personally, my family, when we celebrate Thanksgiving, we're not celebrating... Like the founding of America. Neither do. That's not what Thanksgiving is for. I know. That's what Can I'm I tell saying. you what Thanksgiving Hold is? Hold on. Let me get mine out first. I just wanted to say we, we celebrate just like thankfulness, you know, but I think it is oftentimes, you can't even deny it, it's tied to like the pilgrims and all this like coming to America. You know what I mean? So it's kind of got this idea of we're celebrating a holiday where people were slaughtered and it, it, that's that's what I'm getting at, but go ahead. <laughs> After the Civil War, after slavery okay. becomes abolished, okay. Abraham Lincoln, 1862, I think that was the date, sure. 1861, 1862, he wants to put together a holiday where everyone can come together, no matter their race or creed or religion, mm-hmm. and celebrate unity. And so he remembers learning about an old legend where pilgrims and Indians sat down to rejoice and to unify themselves. Okay. Uh, a solid week of unity. And so he creates Thanksgiving Day to celebrate unity. Well, there you fucking go. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is that... <laughs> that's what I mean, man. But anyways, did you know that several tribes of Indians... I'm gonna I'm gonna keep calling them Indians. Native Americans for all those. Okay. I've been I've called them Indians since I was a little kid, and the people on the video I was calling watching they call them Indians. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Native Americans. Like, <laughs> my dad's got some Indian. And, um, he calls himself part Indian. Uh, right. His grandma was full blooded Indian. I'm gonna I'm gonna say Indian. Okay. <laughs> uh, what the hell was I talking? About? Dude, <laughs> several of them were cannibals. Several of the Indian uh, tribes were cannibals. Really, I, I think I heard that. And a big portion of the murders that happened were because um, the Indians were tired of getting cannibalized and sided with the guys who had guns and horses. Damn. It wasn't just whites trying to. No, dude, we did some shit. Yeah. We did some pretty nasty shit. Yeah. But at the beginning, it wasn't like that. No, I'm not saying it was. I just towards. I didn't know how Thanksgiving was created. So I mean, that's what I'm saying though. People, people have this image that, you know, it's got a bad history. But literally, the history is not bad. There are things that have happened. I mean, it's just like Christmas, the Spanish but Inquisition. Then you can't expect regular people to think that no, much. Dude. The Spanish You're Inquisition, going, like, the no. Crusades, Most all the things that have happened in Christianity. It. Here's what blew my mind. Who cares if you hate Thanksgiving? I love it. Amen, dude. You don't have to celebrate it. I'm going to. And I don't think of pilgrims when I celebrate Thanksgiving. I think of my parents. I think of my wife. I think of my friends. I sent I sent all my friends a, a message. Yeah. That's what I think of. I don't think of, oh, the pilgrims and the Indians and the atrocities that happened in the past. I just think of, at this moment, I want to say I'm thankful for something. And that's what it was designed for. What was I going to say? Give me one minute. Get a phone call from my dad. Oh. I wish I had something to say while he's gone. About four hours away. We can maybe bleep that. I don't know if it's confidential or not. <laughs> maybe bleep it. Well, the last thing I was about to say was I've learned that Steven Crowder, I love him, 
but there's a problem with him. Yeah. And I think he's not genuine on his stances and how he presents himself. You think he does it for the controversy? Some of them, maybe. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, but I think it's ingenuous. Because ingenuous. because he's so caught up in creating controversy, I think that he he ha- he kind of gets lost in his. I think he's a hundred percent correct in his arguments. I think he's false in how he goes about goes it. about it. Okay. So like, you can't say change my mind and then go. This is not a debate, and then. Talk over, your right? Because his the whole time. his stance the whole time is that he can't his mind can't get changed, right? And that's pretty much. That's what you he, know. He, he feels, but that's not how he acts. He advertises it like they can, right? Yeah, but you've never. Seen but him his change position mind, right? is he's going to try to change their mind, or oh, at least okay. see what's going on. Yeah, and I agree with his positions <laughs> wholeheartedly every time, but I really think that it's a shit way of going about it. Right, because the Thanksgiving isn't racist thing could have been going about different I think too because the title is kind of like it's actually spot on but he knows it's going to cause like yeah. controversy so you already know what I'm about to, but anyways there was he was talking about there were like when the conquistadors came there were about mm-hmm. 500 mm-hmm. and there were like at least 10,000 indigenous peoples yeah how did 500 wipe out 10,000 I then, think they were just like the first wave right no yeah. but what happened was the indigenous peoples the, some of them who were, were getting conquered were getting tired of being cannibalized in front of their family. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was well there the, was a lot of war between them. Yeah, it was a tol- well. tons of war. And uh, part of the culture was to, uh, there was sacrifice. Usually mm-hmm. they, they sacrificed uh, people that they conquered, mm-hmm. which were the other Indians. And they would also sometimes, not like the whole person, but would cannibalize part of the person in front of the family. Uh, got pretty gruesome. They'd also enslave the people they conquered. So what would happen is these people got tired of it and would try to join sides with the people who had horses and guns. Damn, dude, that's... So it wasn't 100%. You could almost look at it... I, I, right now I can think of two ways to look at it. You can either think they knew what they were doing and just were really tired of the way that they were living or the p- people coming over saw an advantage and took it either way you look at it uh what, what i was gonna say was knowing that they did not that this girl was saying uh we had no right to tell them that they couldn't do that though like, that they couldn't cannibalize each other you're telling me that they didn't have a right to do that <laughs> and then he used an example of well, what about the nazis gassing right it's, Jews? It's and she's like well that was wrong <laughs> you're like but we don't have a right to tell people I understand what she's saying. Right, what she's trying to, like, she but doesn't to, actually believe what she's saying. She's, but to have a modern society, <laughs> you have to have a set of certain rules. You can't just be eating each yeah. other, you know? Some things we can, we can get by with, you know, but you can't just eat people. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know it's not against the law in Germany to eat people? Really? Do, I but it's re- illegal to kill them, probably, right? Illegal to kill them. Okay. <laughs> but but eat, legal to eat them. You can eat them. Okay. I was, I, oh my God, it made me, I was looking up. Tribes that were still to this day cannibals. Some in New Guinea, right? Uh, Papua New Guinea. I don't. I don't remember. Anyways, what came up was in Germany. This guy and this other guy putting out an advertisement to eat somebody. <laughs> somebody responded before they killed the guy. This is what the article said: they ate his genitals. Dude, I f- I was physically ill. While he was alive. Yeah, and then they stabbed him with a knife and killed him. Did he know that was coming? He had to have. He he didn't maybe didn't know he was gonna be stabbed, but he knew he was gonna be killed. He was gonna be eaten. He agreed to be eaten. Does that not make your stomach? I feel upset? like there should be a documentary or something we can watch. I think they did. What this. was it called? Sounds of the Lambs. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hannibal Lecter, more like Cannibal Lecter, am I right? I think that's yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry to offend you. It's okay. I think that was just a little too much. <laughs> Keep it. And then the next thing I saw, dude, <laughs> let me tell you what I, what I stopped at. Okay. This made me so fucking sick. You remember hearing about uh, bath bombs and bath salts? Bath and people salts. People going crazy eating people's Florida, faces? Florida, yeah. I saw a picture of the guy. Yeah? Oh, my God. It tore me up, dude. The guy's face... He didn't have a bandage on. His 
literal flesh had been eaten off. Crazy, he lost man. an eye. Oh my god! This guy was eating his face while the guy was conscious and alive. Damn, dude, that's some Star Wars like Anakin shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like Darth Vader, you know? Dude, that made me sick to my stomach, man. Yeah, that's insane. I remember when that was happening. It was like 2013, something. Like that. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, I can ear drop too, bro. <laughs> what? You know, people say name drop. I can ear drop. <laughs> <laughs> I I was just guesstimating as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's whack, dude. <laughs> nah, we still have to get to the cookies. Oh. But real quick, remember Hunter? Yeah. I saw Hunter today. We were catching up. Dude, first of all, I miss hanging out with the guy, but... He was telling me some shit. Like, I don't know if this needs to be off. <laughs> I don't know if this needs to be cut out or not. I don't know if Dude, he's okay with me saying this. I don't know if you should then. But I'm about to. <laughs> Dude, he was telling me some bad luck he's been having lately. I don't think you can air that. <laughs> Tell me, then bleep it out. <laughs> can you bleep it all out? One just long it. bleep. Just, no, just cut it out. <laughs> just let him cut it out. <laughs> and then at the end of the cut, we can be like. God saved the world. <laughs> yeah. I've been there. I'm there right now, dude. <laughs> I mean, shit's rough. That's crazy. He told me he listened to the first 10 minutes of our podcast. Dude, said, shout out to Hunter, bro. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and I said, dude, we got two hours of 15 episodes for you to catch up on. Dude, 10 minutes is more than I can make it, bro. Shout out. Are you serious? <laughs> no, nah, I'm just playing. I will sit and watch each I'm one playing. as soon as... He- the last time you messaged me and said the last one was out, I sat there and just watched the, the whole thing. Yeah, I can kind of do that too sometimes. Kind of. My time is more precious than that, but. You say my time is not valuable? No, I just mean I think you've taken some steps to fix your life and now <laughs> you've got time, but I just don't. Yet. I have a problem with uh, not getting enough sleep. Had or have? I have. Hmm. I don't understand it. Last night, it couldn't have been 10 o'clock. I went to bed. Do you wake up early or what? I got up at like 6 o'clock today, and all day long, I've been fucking... Is it because you have to pee? Because 90% of the time, my bladder wakes me up, dude. Like No, I got up at 6 to go to work. Oh. Well, how's that not enough sleep? When did you go to bed? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I was like, it couldn't have been more than 10 o'clock. Because mm-hmm. I remember last looking at my... Uh, clock at like 9 44 that's the last mm-hmm. time i've ever seen the clock number and then all of a sudden it's oh i did wake up at two something and i did have to pee but i woke up because the dogs were going crazy so but can you sl- can you sleep in though regularly like do you have trouble sleeping in uh, the latest i sleep in is like eight o'clock Damn. and i'm still tired all day yeah i started to think i have some kind of disease do you drink water <laughs> and beer if you don't drink water, like, I can't tell if you're kidding or not, but do you drink water by no. yourself? No. Then that's why. I guarantee you. I refuse to drink just water. Are you then kidding? I guarantee you that's your problem, dude. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? I tried getting you to work. Dude, that's your problem, bro. Water will... So you've There's got water the, and beer. You've got the sleeping thing down. You've got the... When have I steered you wrong? I told you about the sleeping thing, right? I yeah. told you about the reading thing, right? Is that yeah. accurate? Well, if you're two out of three, then you could be wrong this time. No, I couldn't. There's, <laughs> the, the numbers don't add up, bro. <laughs> Look at the numbers, Mason. Listen, you need to drink water. I, I don't know how you don't drink water. You'll die, especially in the wintertime. There's no moisture. Bro, I'm there. fucking 25. I haven't died yet, okay? You will, though. You won't live, you won't live to 35, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, water, you're prone to heart attacks because water will thin your blood before you go to sleep, so you won't have a heart attack in your sleep, bro. You need to drink water. I thought thin God. blood was bad. No, dude, it thins it out so it's not like coagulated or whatever. Coagulated. <laughs> Do you know? I don't know. What? I'm trying to remember when I was in biology. I you took some... biology and you don't drink water, bro. Who was your teacher? I'm telling them. <laughs> His name? Are you ready? Yeah. Doctor. Uk Pong. I'm gonna hit him up, dude. He was from know. Nigeria. I don't think he would have liked you not drinking At water. At the time, he didn't like me in general. At the time, <laughs> I wonder why. That Ebola. Remember Ebola? Yes. Hold on. Now you take another commercial break. <clears throat> oh, 
speak, please. This episode could be brought to you by Duolingo. Thanks to Duolingo for... Uh, with Duolingo, you can learn any language you want, as long as it's on Duolingo. I'm learning Spanish. Uh, more on that later. Now it's been with you know, Ebola. Si, si, senor. Never mind. Tell me about Ebola. You don't like my affle- <laughs> inflection? I think it might be... Say it. Say racist. <laughs> you said it, bro. Now let me prove how you're wrong. Okay. I'm- I do not believe the Spanish... Or the Mexicans to be beneath my race, which is the white race. Good. I believe we're all equal, but I don't believe that we all speak the exact same. I agree. I'm just pointing out there's a difference. Okay. Do you have a seek shooter? I have a seek shooter. That's from the office. I'm quoting the office, so I can't be racist. No, I agree. Ebola. When I when I get scared of something, can you make that the thumbnail? Just Ebola <laughs> with Ben holding it up. When, <laughs> when something happens, I don't like to just be the person caught in hysteria. I like to figure out what's going on. Yeah. So you got this book when it was, yeah, happening. How did they have it out? Well, it's a short book. This guy probably saw it. He, he's like, oh, this is going viral. Got to write a little book really quick. And it's pretty I, cool. Yeah, it is. You didn't read it. I read the blurb on the back, bro. <laughs> Sounds lit. What is it? 40 pages? I don't have to read it. Come on, bro. <laughs> Anyways, basically some things I learned was don't go to Nigeria. I asked Doug Pong about it, and uh, he's the reason I bought that book. Cause he's like, it's not what you think it is, but it is still serious. Mm-hmm. I was afraid of getting it. And then for I briefly, it. huh? I welcomed it. I I was like, <laughs> well, no one ever had it. <laughs> You're like, I can see the future. <laughs> Fuck this life. <laughs> Bro. Uh, Isn't it kind of funny how it just kind of died out? Right. Like, well, it's funny how it was, <laughs> how it just like became like the mass hysteria, you know? I believe and then it was it covering down. up something. What? I believe it was covering up something. Yeah. What was going on like? Politically, I don't remember. Time. Probably something you don't remember because Ebola. Was that's happening exactly. Instead. That's the truth, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, one thing though, that reminds me of Hunter was describing to me some things that he heard. Uh, something called Oliver North. These are some major conspiracies that have been proven. Hmm. It's like, can you call them conspiracies? What is a conspiracy? These are not unproven theories these are proven theories not even theories like i don't want to do a disservice and not know exactly what i'm talking about okay so we'll figure it out yeah do you want to look into these cookies now our last uh bit sure. yeah yeah crack them open dude let's crack them open wide here's a half-eaten one Um, okay. You can open Okay. Let's see, where's the paper that talks about what they all are? I don't know. You gave them to me. You put them over there. I'll kill you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was trash. Let me say... My... F- can I have the heart? Yes. Unless Brandon wants it. Can I have the What? There's only one heart. You know, split the heart? It's okay. not going to break. My favorite thing. Can we get a look at this? Wait, can I? Can we make this a game? Can I try to guess what your favorite is going to be? Because I bet I can figure it out. No, you can't. Please, can I for a sec? Yeah. Don't look at my finger because my fingers uh, are gross. Oh. Can I, is your finger on it? Yeah. Oh, well, let me look at this. No, I'm not telling you not to look at my finger. I'm telling them not to look at my finger. I want to try to figure out what's I mess my fingers favorite. up. I pick them a lot. I don't bite them. That's gross. Your favorite one is the 
tea time thin crisp cookie with all the slices. <laughs> <laughs> I I knew it. Dude. It's, it's like a gingerbread flavor. It's the least appetizing one to me. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that's like the best tasting one. I'm not lying. It's I'll like, try it. For it's you, like gingerbread. I don't know if I like. No, there's another one though. Okay. Let me. Oh, you want me to figure it out? Yeah. Your second favorite. Dude, that's fucking brilliant, dude. That's fucking spot on. <laughs> I don't think I can do it twice in a row, but the uh... go for it. You were right about sleep and <laughs> the other thing <laughs> and reading. It's either the dark chocolate coconut one or the shortbread with chocolate chips. This one or this one? You're long off. Fuck it, dude. Which one is it? <laughs> it's that, that horse. Chest piece. Oh, okay. Dude, that chocolate on that cookie, I have learned something about myself. I think, yeah, the cookie and the chocolate together. Dude, together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, me and Brendan, me and Brendan did some t- tasting. Get a, get a good view of those first. You called both of them? (laughs) (laughs) So let's see. You are eating delicate fan-shaped cookie dipped in dark chocolate. Mm. I am going to get the chest piece. Go ahead. Where's the other one? Oh, it's underneath it. Dude, get that other chest piece. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, I do like white chocolate. But dude, taste this, man. This is my favorite. This is actually one of my all-time favorite things I've had. Ooh. That's pretty good. I'd say it's very good, bro. Mm. Just the crunchy of the cookie. Mm-hmm. And the cocoa of the chocolate. Mm-hmm. Mm. Dude, it's brilliant. <laughs> okay. Mm. Try a tea time crisp. I don't even really want to, but yeah, you do. <clears throat> They're so brittle. Mm. Mind what you say. Oh, it has no taste until after, but um. The aftertaste is really good. It's like um, you just don't. You were overcome by chocolate. You said ginger, but no, not ginger. Gingerbread. Yeah, close. I still don't think it's gingerbread. I think it's something else. But <clears throat> what does it say? Ooh, the taquitos looking things. <laughs> Be cooler if they had chocolate on the inside. No, I don't want one. I figured Brennan would like it. I want you to try one. <laughs> you try it and just tell me what it is. Oh. Are you... F- you're about to piss me the fuck off. We're having a little segment where me and you can, like, you know, come together over um, tea and crumpets. And we don't have tea or crumpets, so this is... That's good. It's solid, ain't it? It's very good. It's like wafers, but a lot of them. Yeah. All at once. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really good. Yeah. Let me get my uh Look at this. I love it so much and it just breaks apart. It just It's solid. All these are Walmart. Walmart. These are good. Mm. Mm. Dude, that is the taste of a ginger <clears throat> snap. I still don't know if I can agree. You ever had a ginger snap? Yeah, I ate a lot of them growing up. Then you should know that they're the same. Fuck off. What's this? Mm, okay. There's not a whole lot in there that I thought were, like, really good. Now, why is it that ginger tastes so Asian-y, but gingerbread tastes so not Asian-y? <laughs> mm. What is ginger in versus gingerbread? What is Asian-y? Um, soy, 
Atlantic. <laughs> so ginger tastes like soy? Ginger oh, no. tastes like I'm coming out of the ground in China. Well, because it's in a lot of Chinese food and Asian food, but I think it has a taste. I think ginger existed before Chinese food well, existed. I'm, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, the root existed. <laughs> yeah, don't before. get it twisted, bro. I'm saying okay, it doesn't the Chinese taste like people. Chinese food. I'm Did saying... Okay. It tastes like Dude, ginger. It the better, has its own the better way to say profile. it is Chinese people look like they eat ginger. Because <laughs> ginger's <laughs> from that part of the world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't even make sense of that. I would say it's in a lot of Asian food. Here's what I, I would say. say. We use it at the place I work. Well, okay. Forget me saying it tastes like Asian. This doesn't ta- Ginger and gingerbread don't taste the same. But are they different? <laughs> like, what is it? <laughs> Well, probably when you're eating it in food, there's probably, like you said, soy sauce, there's garlic, so it's like ginger combined with those flavors. I cook with ginger. I know what the solitary flavor is. Okay. I don't understand how it changes into this. Well, because this has eggs, almonds, flour, sugar, even if it's just a little bit. I'm so sick of your bullshit. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm answering your questions, like actually doing a good job. Answering my questions with lies is not answering. I will kill you where you stand, bro. I'm not, bro. I'm sitting. I'm spitting facts. I'm not Dude, even I don't think I these look enough. excellent. They're the, these with chocolate. Mm. <laughs> Fuck off, dude. Mm. These are fucking delicious. They're good. They're the boomer cookie. We want some biscottis. Oh, this looks good. You should be all Dude, over this. It's coconut. No. I, I thought it would, really? But uh-uh. it's not enough. Fuck you, I love that. <clears throat> what are you, some kind of millennial? <laughs> no, dude, it's excellent. <laughs> this one looks good, too. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> I would say all around. It's a pretty solid... There's not a bad cookie in this batch. There's not a bad one, no. But there's some that are kind of just not pleasing. No. (laughs) They all appeased me, bro. Except my boomer cookie. I liked it. You didn't even try one of those because he ate them both. They're right here, bro. What? Why didn't you eat them? He's always got us in his hearts, dude. Mm -hmm. I mean... Those are good, bro. (laughs) Dude, these are, it's a solid. Very good. It's solid. They all, they were excellent. That was 10 bucks for that 10. 10 of like four slides, and each slide has like two cookies each. I thought it was amazing. <clears throat> Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, oh, shit. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can't count. Because some of them have four. Some of them have one. 14 so, cookies. At least. 14 individual cookies is what I mean. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Double like, this one by like six. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. so there's, there's like six of this. <laughs> That's good stuff. Thanks for sharing. I wish they would come up with like beer things Samplers, like that. Like little, sh- little shots or what? Little A whole two cans. Ounce, two ounce. Oh, okay. Damn. <laughs> no, I'm ready to pay, dude. I bet there's a beer crate you could order dude, online. Dude, I just spent 30 bucks on a gift today. It's for someone, and I can't say what it is or what it is. Wait, I just, I can't say what it is or who it is for. What is it? <laughs> How much was it? I'm going to fucking kill you. Wait, oh, shit, bucks? I can't believe I said that. You said 30 bucks. Someone's going to happy you tonight, and they're going to blame me. What? Nothing. You know what I really miss? Mm. Those, um, those, uh, they're called fudge stripes. It's like the cookie with the stripes of chocolate or fudge on top. Mm. Keebler? Mm-hmm. They still make those. Yeah. I didn't say they stopped. If you miss something, <laughs> you should do something about not missing it. Go out there and buy some. <laughs> let's go right now, bro. All right. Let's wrap this up. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Peace. No, uh, thank you so much for watching. Please hit subscribe. Uh, thank you to Jason again for the art and, um, uh, I feel like we're stagnating on 62 viewers. Please hit subscribe for the love of God.
We will not give you another episode like this if you don't subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> and you want more like this, trust me. No, you don't. Uh, th- uh, thanks. <laughs> Bye. Peace. <clears throat>